Hi! In this video, I will teach you the basics of MOSFETs. And by basics, I mean really basics. This video is ideal for the person who has never studied MOSFET professionally but want to use them in projects. I will talk about N and P channel MOSFETs, how to use them, how they are different and why both are important. I will also talk about some little known facts about MOSFETs and much more. Let's get into it. Before starting MOSFETs, let me introduce to its predecessor, the JFET or Junction Field Effect Transistor. It will make understanding MOSFET a little easier. This is the cross section of a JFET. The terminals are identical to MOSFET terminals. This part is called the substrate or body and is just an n-type or p-type semiconductor depending on the type of the FET. These regions are then grown on the substrate having opposite type than that of the substrate and are named gate, drain and source. Whatever voltage you apply, you apply to these regions. Today from practical point of view, it has very little to no importance. I won't go for more explanation beyond this as it will get too technical and is not required anyways. This is the symbol of JFET which will help us understanding the symbol of MOSFET. After this comes the MOSFET, having a major difference in the gate terminal. Before making the context for gate terminal, a layer of silicon dioxide is grown above the substrate. This is the reason it is named metallic oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. SiO2 is a very good dielectric or you can say insulator. This increases the gate resistance in the scale of 10 to the power 10 ohms and we assume that in a MOSFET, gate current IG is always zero. This is the reason why it's also called insulated gate field effect transistor. A layer of good conductor like aluminium is grown additionally above all the three regions and then contacts are made. Here in the gate region, you can see that a parallel plate capacitor like structure is formed and it actually introduces a considerable capacitance to the gate terminal. It is referred as gate capacitance and can easily destroy your circuit if not taken into account. These are also very important while studying on a technical level. This is the symbol for MOSFETs and placing another line on the gate makes sense while relating them to JFETs indicating the gate has been insulated. The arrow direction in this symbol depicts the conventional direction of electron flow inside the MOSFET which is opposite to that of the current flow. One more thing I would like to add is that most people think it is a 3 terminal device, while actually MOSFETs are a 4 terminal device. The 4 terminal is the body terminal. You might have seen the symbol for MOSFET at one point or another. The center terminal is the body terminal. But why almost all the MOSFETs have only 3 terminal coming out of it? The body terminal is internally shorted to the source as it is of no use in the application of the simple ICs and after that the symbol becomes this. The body terminal is generally used when a complicated CMOS technology IC is fabricated. Keep in mind that this is the case for an N-channel MOSFET. The picture will be a bit different if the MOSFET is P-channel. Ok, so now let's see how it works. A bipolar junction transistor or a BJT is a current control device. That means the amount of current flow in its base terminal determines the current that will flow through a transistor. But we know that there is no role of current in MOSFET's gate terminal and collectively we can say that it is a voltage control device. Not because gate current is always zero, but because of its structure which I will not explain in this video because of its complicacy. Let's consider an N-channel MOSFET. When no voltage is applied in the gate terminal, two back-to-back -back diodes exist between the substrate and drain and source region causing the path between drain and source to have a resistance in the order of 10 to the power 12 ohms. We have now grounded the source and started increasing the gate voltage. When a certain minimum voltage is reached, the resistance drops and the MOSFET starts conducting and the current starts to flow from drain to source. This minimum voltage is called threshold voltage of a MOSFET and the current flow is due to the formation of a channel from drain to source in the substrate of the MOSFET. As the name suggests, in an N-channel MOSFET, the channel is made up of N type of carriers that is electrons which is opposite of the type of the substrate. But it has only started here. Applying the threshold voltage does not mean you are just ready to use the MOSFET. If you look at the datasheet of this N-channel MOSFET, you will see that at its threshold voltage, only a certain minimum current can flow through it. That is good if you just want to use smaller loads like LEDs. But what is the point then? So for using bigger loads that draw more current, you will have to apply more voltage to the gate. The increasing gate voltage enhances the channel causing more currents to flow through it. To completely turn on the MOSFET, the voltage VGS, which is the voltage between gate and source, must be somewhere about 10 to 12 volts. That means if the source is grounded, the gate must be at 12 volts or so. 
The MOSFET we just discussed are called enhancement type MOSFETs for the reason that the channel gets enhanced with increase in gate voltage. There is another type of MOSFET called depletion type MOSFET. The major difference is in the fact that channel is already present in the depletion type MOSFET. This type of MOSFET is usually not available in the market and is used by scientists for research purposes. The symbol for depletion type MOSFET is a bit different. The solid line indicates the channel is already present. Now let's say you are using a microcontroller to control the MOSFET. Then you can only apply a maximum of 5 volts or less to the gate terminal, which will not be enough for high current loads. To solve this problem, you can use a MOSFET driver like these. You just have to provide a logic signal at its input pins and it will take care of the rest. Or you can build a driver yourself. But a MOSFET driver has a lot more advantages in the fact that it also takes care of several other things like gate capacitance etc. When the MOSFET is completely turned on, its resistance is denoted by RDS on and can be easily found in the datasheet. A P-channel MOSFET is just opposite of the N-channel MOSFET. The current flows from source to drain and the channel is made up of P-type of charge carriers, that is holes. The source in a P-channel MOSFET must be at the highest potential and to completely turn it on, VGS must be negative 10 to 12 volts. For example, if source is tied to 12 volts, the gate at 0 volts must be able to completely turn it on and that is why we generally say applying 0 volts to the gate turn a P-channel MOSFET on and due to these requirements, the MOSFET driver for N-channel cannot be used directly with P-channel MOSFET. The P-channel MOSFET drivers are available in the market or you can simply use an inverter with the N-channel MOSFET driver. The P-channel MOSFETs have relatively higher on resistance than N-channel MOSFETs but that doesn't mean you can always use an N-channel MOSFET for any possible applications. Why you ask? Let's say you have to use the MOSFET in this configuration. This type of switching is called low side switching because you are using the MOSFET to connect the device to ground. An N-channel MOSFET would be best suited for this job as VGS is not wearing and can be easily maintained at 12 volts. But if you want to use an N-channel MOSFET for high side switching, the source can be anywhere between ground and VCC which will eventually affect the voltage VGS as gate voltage is constant. This will have a huge impact on the proper functioning of the MOSFET. Also the MOSFET burns out if VGS exceeds the mentioned maximum value which is around 20 volts on an average. Hence it is not a cakewalk to use an N-channel MOSFET here. What we do is we use a P-channel MOSFET despite having a greater on resistance as it has the advantage that VGS will be constant throughout during a high side switching. There are also other methods like bootstrapping which I will talk about in a future video. Lastly, let's take a quick look at this ID VDS curve. A MOSFET can be operated in three regions. When VGS is less than the threshold voltage, the MOSFET is in cutoff region, that is it is off. If VGS is greater than the threshold voltage but less than the sum of voltage drop VDS and the threshold voltage, it is said to be in triad region or linear region. In linear region, a MOSFET can be used as a voltage variable resistor. If VGS is greater than the said voltage sum, then the drain current becomes constant and it is said to be in working in saturation region. And to make the MOSFET act as a switch, it should be operated in this region as the maximum current passed through the MOSFET in this region only. So after all this, a question still remains. When we should use MOSFETs? The simple answer is when you have to switch bigger loads that require more voltage and current, you should use MOSFETs. They have the advantage of minimum power loss compared to BJTs even at higher currents. With this, the video is complete and you should now be ready to make use of MOSFETs in your projects. If you learned something and like this video, please leave a like, share the video and consider subscribing as more videos are on their way. Thank you guys for watching, till next time.